Why, hello there! <laughs> yes, today you get to look at this. This whole beautiful operation. Whoops, that's not right. Hey, there we go! All right. Yeah, um, okay. Hmm, I don't know. Some, something doesn't seem right with that. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's okay. Hold on, here we go. Ooh, another close-up of my face. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about Lizzle Man. And uh, the best thing is that you're, we're talking about my lizard men. Yes, that's right. Now, uh, way back when, in 2003, I painted a lizard men army, and it was all just glaze, just washes everywhere, and it, it wasn't wasn't too bad. I, uh, it, but it was the old like metal hunched Saurus warriors, you know, and um, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, I, I found it online, and I if if you type in um, green lizard men or something like that, you can find some pictures of that on like Yahoo Images or something. Anyway, yeah, wow, I just wasted like 30 seconds of your life. So, um, new Lizardman book is out, and I have in all the um, all the models that uh, that I want for my army. It's at least 2,500 points. So let's take a look and talk a little bit about list building with Lizardmen. And I'm going to uh, also, you know, maybe give some insights into um, how, to, how to do it. And I'd sure love to hear from some veterans, from some competitive players. I know we have them, especially from, uh, from the Scandinavian countries. Those guys are serious. Do you remember Tomas from uh, Valhalla last year? That guy was awesome. I, uh, I, I really liked him. He was, he was really nice. Uh, actually, I actually uh, drove, drove him home after Valhalla was over. Not to uh, Finland or whatever, but to, uh, no, so it wasn't Finland. All right, anyway. All right, so uh, we're gonna skip heroes for now, and we're gonna go to uh, core units. So my army uh, beefs out with two 30 blocks of Saurus warriors. Uh, Saurus. Yeah, so if you do the math on that, uh, that is um, 60, that is, oh my gosh, I can do this, uh, 660 points. So with command, it comes to, I do believe it comes to 720. So I've got 720 points right there. Uh, can you guys see that? Yeah, actually, I, I, I do believe you can, you can see that. All right, so uh, now I could, I could fuse these two blocks together and make one giant horde of 60 guys. And let me tell ya, yikes. Uh, so predatory, predatory fighter is kind of a mixed blessing uh, because if I read it right, it means that if you roll a six to hit, you get another attack. Um, but uh, it can only restrain pursuit if there's a skink character model uh, within six inches of the unit. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Skink Chief, Skink Priest, 10 and 1, Tendo, Echo, and Tic Tac Toe. So, hmm, maybe that's not so awesome. So, um, but, uh, I, you know, I think it's relatively, um, uh, maybe evens out. I, I've read different things about it. One is that, ah, it's the end of the world, because you lose, you do lose control over your guys. Like, you have to pursue. And so it's like, well, people can, people can bait you, bait you out. So, uh, and that's something I actually, when I made my list, I didn't, I didn't see that. So uh, let's continue. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, my next thing is a unit of Temple Guard with Slon. I have 30 Temple Guard. So uh, if you add in a Slon, which takes four of the spots, um, Temple G, um, you end up with a unit that's 34 thick. So it uh, maintains rank bonus just a little bit, just a little bit better. And of course, Temple Guard are still uh, hard hitters, and uh, so that's about um, that's with with command. You're probably pushing almost 500 points just for just for the Temple Guard there. So that is that is definitely three big old bricks, big old beefy, scaly, gnarly bricks. Um, I did find some chameleon skinks, and uh, I'm just going to paint those up for fun. I don't know if we'll use them. I found eight. So they're skirmishers. I'll just uh, put those over here. Chameleons, cam. 
All right, um, let's see here. And uh, I am including a stegodon, so my, art, my general rule for fantasy listing is you got to have two or three giant big beefy units, and then you have support units. So in Lizardmen, the support units are usually the dinos. So I've got a stegodon here. That's on a chariot base. Now, this, this could be my skink hero, that you get an engine of the gods, and then uh, where do you put that? You put that right here. So you, uh, you kind of have that radius of, of control there. Um, I, I do have two Bastilladons. I love those models. They're 150 points. Um, I, right now, quite frankly, I am a believer in the, um, the solar engine. Just throw a dice at it each turn because the damage that it does is so huge. It's, I mean, it's, it's along the lines of the old Zinch demons that if it gets off on a four out, you're doing, uh, I think it is 2d6 strength five hits. Oh my gosh, you could just, you could decimate units with that. And so, uh, but you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating which by the way, that's the right way to say that. Uh, yeah, 2d6 strength five hits. It's incredible, but it's, it is really easy to dispel, and let me tell you why. Because, uh, so here's my Bastilladons, which are almost, they're, they're, and because it's a spell though, they can march, they can move, they can do all this stuff, and, uh, but it is a magic missile, so unfortunately it is the thing that kind of works against itself, because if he's not in close combat, then the Bastilladon doesn't attack. Uh, but if he is in close combat, then he can't use the solar, the solar beam, the, uh, what is it called? The beam of Chotek. And so, uh, but it is only power level three. Oh, and note that it's not an item, it's an innate bound spell. So that means that uh, all that happens if you do irresistible force is that it just, uh, it just doesn't work. So, so... Part of me is like, well, then just don't have a mage, just run these Bastilladons and throw your power dice out through the beam of Chotek. But the problem there is you lose your magic defense, and of course I have a Salon Mage Priest, which by the way weighs in, hold on, let me just uh, figure that out. I think they're like 400 points each, so boy, the, the numbers on this just add up. Yeah, once you add in all their abilities, you're at about 400 points, so here's 400. So I'm right around uh, 1,600 points just with those three. So and with the Stegodon over here, let's call that 250. Um, so that's, um, hold on, 1,700. Uh, you got the Bastilladons. I'll put Steg here. So the Bastilladons, I have two. As far as I can tell, you can make the tops magnetized for that. Okay, so the Bastilladons, um, yeah, that is, uh, they're, they're kind of cool. Okay, so, um, oh, oh, but there's more. Uh, let's keep going. So I am doing a unit of uh, three Ripper Dactyls, and I'm just going to try those guys and see how they work, because I think they're an assassination unit, uh, and we, we shall see. Well, what's interesting is, well, the unit size is three. What would be great is if they were like giant eagles, is if you could just buy like a bunch of these and just run them individually. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing because of the shenanigans you can do with, uh, with eagles. But no, it's a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty expensive unit. And uh, so, okay, so I got my ripper dactyls over here. I've got six. I'm just going to put together three and see how I like them. Because I kind of like the, the uh, pterodon. Uh, model the way it looks. So, yes, I choose things according to how it looks. So, um, you get your Stegodon in the middle here. Uh, I've got my Bastilladons as support and also as uh, ranged. And quite frankly, if you just spent a turn just maxing out those beams of Chotek, um, you could really you could really kill something pretty quick. Let's do the let's do the math on that. Let's say, uh, let's say you do the beam. What is the average number of hits the beam does? Let's, uh, let's just do the math, okay? Because, um, okay, so let's say on a two up, let's take the one result and the, and the six result and just kind of cancel them out. 
And so let's average the two through five. So one does D6 strength four hits, and the other does 2D6 strength five hits. So let's call that the equivalent of, so it'd be seven or 3.5, so it'd be about, I don't know. Let's, let's call it five, let's call it four strength five hits. Yeah, that actually, that actually isn't that awesome. Um, on average, hmm. All right, well, we'll just, we'll just have to see him in action, and you will, because I'm making this army, this army's going, this army's going really fast. Um, I've um, formed a small team of artists to work on specialty projects like this, and we, uh, did, because I didn't want to put studio projects through where client projects were, and so uh, th those tend to get done done pretty efficiently. So, all right, uh, let's continue with the army. In rares, I did pick up a troglodon, and that is, I'm gonna run them pretty close to here because, uh, in fact, let's put him up here. Now, unfortunately, apparently, this doesn't count as a skink character, even though it has like this oracle, that the really skink oracle that rides on him. Uh, so, so much for that. Uh, but he does have a roar, which gives him predatory fighter on a five or a six. So, um, and uh, the troglodon is 200 points. You've got 300 here. Uh, the chameleons, I don't know, let's call that 100. And uh, let's see, stick it on. And oh, my sal my razor dawn hunting packs. Here's here's the lizard man ranged stuff. So the razor dons. Love those models. Love, uh, just love everything about them. Um, however, do note that these packs, the pack comes with this, a Razor Dawn and three handlers. Well, how many handlers can you have? One additional handler per pack. So you can take, uh, you actually need to make a plastic one and just have him add it. So bear that in mind when you set up your Lizard Man commission that uh, you do want one more you do want one more handler made up, because that's definitely worth the four points. 65 points a pack. Yikes. But they can stand and shoot. And that is that is fantastic. So you can be very aggressive with them. So the Razor Dons are coming in at right around 200. The Ripper Dactyls are coming in around, uh, I'm going to call them 100. Okay, that's not right, but just for the sake of even numbers. So let's add up, let's add up our army. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even get to the heroes yet. So I got a BSB, I got Gorrock as just a Saurus guy, and then I also got, um, wow, did I get a Carnosaur? I think I did. I think I got a Carnosaur too. Oh my gosh. Ah! This army's gotten out of hand, folks! That's how it always happens. It's out of hand. Okay, so I got a, a Carnosaur to lead it. Oh my gosh. All right, I, I'm not sure. I think I may have just gotten one, but I think I, I think I got two. The Carnosaur with the hero on it pushes 400. Uh, so I got a Saurus hero, and then I got another Saurus hero, because I got Gorrock and Chakax as my heroes. And uh, how are we doing? We're doing good on time. All right, folks, so uh, these all add up to probably, uh, I'm gonna say 500 points here. So let's, oh, let's add it up. Oh, this army's out of control already. And uh, so by the way, if you want a lizard man army done, definitely get in touch because we can just make it happen. That's the beauty of BTP. Look at the crew that we have. You've met them all. And we have two guys full time just to take the orders and tell you how your project's coming. Oh, and, and a third guy full time, a, uh, a project manager who actually sees everything through from A to Z and makes sure it's all going smoothly. And, uh, you know, multiple checkoffs, and it, it's just, it's so reliable, it's so secure, and I just, I love how this industry has gone. I love the role that I've been able to play in it. It is just fantastic. So, let's add up those points. Uh, seven, oh boy, all right, where do I even start? 300, 400, 500, 600, um, 1300, 1800, 2200, um, oh no, 2600, 3100, 3200, uh, 3300, about third, yeah, basically with adjustments, 3500 points.
What did I do? Um, so uh, yeah, I'm putting, I'm putting this all together and uh, it is, it is going to be really fantastic. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking seafoam green for the skin and so a very pale green and, uh, and then the rest just the regular colors, teal of course, gold, uh, red, I mean just all these things can come in to do this, uh, this group, this, just this absolutely brilliant army. Now the dinos, uh, they're going to be earth tones. So when you're when you're painting your uh, lizardmen army, the lizardmen typically have a one color scheme, and they have two different parts of their bodies. They have this soft, fleshy part on their face and their bellies and their arms, and then they have this hard, scaly part which is down their backs. So like tyranids, you have to pick two different things. So I'm probably going to go with like a really dark earth tone type thing, and then the seafoam green for the skin. Uh, I have a client who is doing his skin yellow, which I think is extremely striking, and I'm very excited to see how that turns out. And, uh, but the dinosaurs, you do them, the, the two different parts, typically, uh, but uh, they have a different color scheme entirely. So my fave is to make the dinos uh, like an earth tone type color, and then that makes them muted. But earth tones can be exciting too, a khaki, an eggshell, a uh, very muted mineral blue uh, can happen. Uh, grays, um, you can work in like a like a bricky, rusty red in there, and so. But you, you don't want everything to be like blah, so bright. So uh, uh, that that is the, those are the choices you have to make when you're making a lizard in the army. If I were to tone this down, I would just drop a bunch of stuff. I'd probably drop a bastilodon, the chameleon skinks. Um, and it just it depends on what the roles are. You do need some troubleshooters. Razor bones are excellent troubleshooters because they can hold their own in close combat. All the other troubleshooters uh, and troublemakers, like the things that war machine hunters and stuff, the razor dons just eat those up. They eat them up through shooting and they eat them up in close combat. And the razor dons can turn a battle at a critical moment too uh, because they have two attacks at strength five. Well, they're like a cavalry charge basically. Uh, except the Razor Dons are the knights with lances that hit every turn at strength five, and the skinks are kind of like the horses. They just do these little strength three piddly attacks from behind. But uh, those, those guys are pretty awesome. I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Razor Dons. I can't get rid of them. Um, the Carnosaur, I'm not sure what he's doing in here. I mean, this is a lot of heroes once you add in the Slon, even for 3,500. I mean, you're looking at uh, 1,300 points of heroes. And so, but I simply could not pass up that Carnosaur model, and that's the only way to include it, is to make a character. And it's just so, yeah, I just had to get the new figures. They're great. All right, folks, that's your Lizard Man. That's Sean's Lizard Man. And if you check the liner notes, there is an email for our projects uh, team, and we can, we can get your Lizard Man army, great or small, just done. It just arrives in a pack, you open it up on oh, there. There are the, the jewels. They're beautiful. They are, it's, it, there's nothing like opening a package full of freshly painted miniatures. All right, thanks for tuning in.